Hey, this is Rob from Producer Tech, and in this movie, I'm going to give you an overview of Transfer's LFO tool effect, which is available on the Plugin Boutique website. This audio effect is exactly as the name suggests, an LFO that can be used to modulate the effect's built-in filter, as well as the volume or pan position of the signal being processed, which allows you to create results like this. The interface is really easy to use. There are 12 switches at the top, which select the curve you want to edit. These can then be fully customized any way you want, and then chosen as the modulation sources for the filter cutoff and resonance, as well as the volume or panning, all in the LFO routing section alongside. For example, I've got a bass sound I've just made on a MIDI track in live here, which is simply a looped waveform in sampler. Run through a load of saturators, and then an EQ. Then I've got a MIDI clip triggering it to play a simple phrase, along to a beat from Loopmaster's Dubstep Therapy sample pack, which together sound like this. So let's add the LFO tool effect to this track, and then create some nice movement to the notes now, by adding some filter modulation. First up, I'll add the low pass filter to the bass, and bring the cutoff right down so the top end is removed. Now, to modulate the cutoff of the filter, I just turn up the cutoff slider in the routing section. I'll turn it up all the way so the effect is nice and noticeable. The number 1 next to the slider is telling me that curve 1 is currently modulating the cutoff, so I can then use the graph and controls to the left to edit that curve. The rate slider below sets the global speed the effect and all its curves run at, and this can be unsynced if you prefer to set it to any frequency you like, or kept synced to set it to a note or bar value that relates to your session tempo. Right now then, the rate is a quarter note, or crotchet, so the cutoff is going up and down once each beat. You can see this effect by the moving dot above the cutoff slider in the routing section too which is handy, as the curve shown on the display may not be the one that's actually modulating the cutoff. So now, to double the speed of this, I could change the rate to an eighth. Or I could keep the rate the same and edit the curve myself. The way you do this is simply by double-clicking the curve to add a point, and double-clicking to remove points, then dragging them around on the graph. Holding down the Option key while dragging points snaps them to the grid, which you can change the resolution of using the snap setting below. So I'll just add a couple of extra points now, which I'll drag to the grid positions as follows. The advantage of making your own curve like this, rather than changing the rate, is that you can now change the shape by dragging the line between points, to make the pattern more interesting. To create a variation of this now, I can use the copy and paste switches at the top to duplicate the curve to one of the other slots. Then I just select that curve in the router, and then edit it however I want. Maybe this time I'll use the shift key, which can be held down to create a horizontal line on a step, to make an interesting effect at the end of the curve here. For the next curve, I might want to create a repeating downward filter sweep pattern. So I can just use the preset list in the corner to select the downward sawtooth. If I wanted this to be at a faster tempo though, I can use the warp setting, which is another nice feature that allows you to multiply the global timing just for this curve, so the other two we made won't be affected. So now, we're getting the effect of the global timing being a sixteenth. But if I switch back to the previous curves in the router section, you can hear their timing remains the same. To demonstrate some of the other global parameters at the bottom here now, I'll switch to a new curve. 
and I'll choose one of the sidechain presets, which are nice ways of instantly getting that pumping effect on a bass. And there are a few different curves to try. Of course, I can edit any points if I want to increase their effect, for example. And now, supposing the effect is a bit too keen, then I can use the phase setting to make the curve start a bit later. The slider actually makes it earlier, so I need to go almost to the end to get the lazier effect that I want. It really helps having the resulting curve displayed in blue in the background. Now I'll increase the warp setting to make it faster. Then I can show you what happens when you crank up the swing, which spaces out the LFO re-triggering on the first beat and then squashes them together on the second. So now we're getting a really cool effect just from one curve. Of course, the best results are achieved by combining different curves. Here's a few different curves modulating several of the parameters at once. Switching between curves is easy too, as the effect responds to MIDI notes. So if you set a MIDI channel's output to go to the LFO tool, then you can put that track into record, and then in live turn on the input monitoring, then play notes in different octaves to change the curve that each parameter is modulated by. I'm playing notes in the first MIDI note octave range right now, which is controlling the cutoffs curve. But if I switch to notes a couple of octaves up, then I can control what curve modulates the volume of the signal. There are additional switches on the left of the plugin that allow you to add more performance effects by playing notes at the higher end of the MIDI note range, such as changing the global LFO rate on the fly. Or re-triggering the LFO every time you play a note. Although this is fun for performing live, it's also great when producing, as you can create MIDI clips to carry out any of these functions precisely on the beat for you. Here are the MIDI clips I was playing at the start. These clips have notes that create pretty complex filter, resonance and volume modulation sequences by switching between curves, sometimes multiple times a beat. Some clips are also making use of the LFO re-triggering using the upper MIDI note range as well. So you can see what a simple yet powerful tool this is, with 12 curves per effect, all of which can be edited to any shape and speed you want, as well as a whole host of other MIDI control options, there really is no easier or more fun way to create lfo parts in your tracks. It also comes with a bunch of presets, for instantly loading up ready-made curves for processing your track with. Plus there's even a MIDI out option on the VST version, which you could use for routing out to any external hardware synths as well. So in summary, this is an invaluable plugin for anyone wanting unrivaled control over the frequencies, level and panning of basses, leads or other sounds in their track. To find out more information and purchase the effect, go to the LFO Tools page on PluginBoutique.com.